Hello everybody and welcome to this next installment of the Bukowski Book Club. I will say, I forgot to do the video um, review of Mockingbird Wish Me Luck, so I'm going to do that this week and get that up. But today, if I could reach over here, we're going to be talking about um, Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame, Choked by Smoke. And we're just going to, today we're just going to go over the history of this a little bit, talk a little bit about kind of what was going on during the time of this book, what this book is even about, because this is basically Bukowski's first bind up, sort of, and it's done in a real loosey goosey way. I'm going to go over here. Okay, so this book came out in 1973, or did it come out in 74? It came out in 74. In 1973, when he was writing the new content in this book, I'm going to talk about um, some of the stuff that happened during Mockingbird Wish Me Luck. Since Mockingbird Wish Me Luck was released, Bukowski had earlier that year... Um, Erections, Ejaculations, Exhibitions, and General Tales of Ordinary Madness came out um, from City Lights. And that was the short stories that would end up being Tales of Ordinary Madness and The Most Beautiful Woman in Town. Then, a little while after that, Bukowski and Linda King put out the uh, split chapbook me and your sometimes love poems. There was an LP release, like a record, a cold turkey press special, three poems from a 1967 home reading. I'm not 100% if that's the one that he did with Steve Richmond. I can't remember. By this time, as you know, he's already been doing a bunch of readings. He did the Poets Theater thing that ended up being the Hackford documentary, um, the Poems and Insult CD, and Bukowski Reads His Poetry. He did some readings at Long Beach State. He did a reading in New York at St. Mark's Church. He read at the Robinson Jeffers Room at Occidental College, which is actually pretty close to where I'm at right now. Papa Box Bookstore in L.A., that was basically what he was doing then. He traveled to Phoenix with Linda King. His monthly income from Black Sparrow Press is $300 in 1972, roughly equal to what he was earning a full-time as a full-time letter carrier 12 years earlier and only half of what he was earning as a clerk two years earlier. Him and Linda King broke up and got back together during that year. So in 1973, he receives a $5,000 Creative Writing Fellowship grant from the National Endowment of the Arts, which is crazy that Bukowski got um, an NEA grant, seriously. At this time, he's earning 3000 a year from magazine and book royalties. Should I get an inflation calculator out? I think I'm going to get an inflation calculator out. In 1973, if in 1973 I purchased an item, then in, oh yeah, 2023. Okay, so he, was, he got $3,000 from the National Endowment of Arts. Oh my fucking God, you're joking me, dude. That's fucking shocking. Fuck, I should fucking apply for some grants. Grants, dude. Okay, so in case you guys don't know how much inflation's gone up, his $3,000 that he got in 1973 and 2023, that would be $20,549. 20 fucking grand was the equivalent of what he got. Fuck my face. And then he was also getting $3,000 a year off of his books and magazines. So he was making forty grand a year. Okay, motherfucker, this guy, legend. Bukowski performs in a stage reading of Linda King's one-act play. Oh, that must have been horrendous. Sells film options for post office for 2500 bucks and erections, ejaculations, and blah, blah, blah for 2000 Neither film is made. Okay, 
So in seventy three, let's let's add this up because because he's he's doing well right now. Let's see. So forty five. Fuck me. He got another thirty thousand, almost thirty one thousand. So if we're adding all this up in today's money, so seventy one grand. He's not doing too shabby here. Um, travels to Utah with Linda King. If you've read the stories, the Walden one, um, that's when he was in Utah. Um, and then in August, he finally. Um, I think breaks from Linda King for good. This is the final um, breakup. Um, Bukowski, Taylor Hackford's film premieres at the Barnes Dole Park Municipal Gallery Theater. And then Bukowski, Taylor Hackf Hackford's film, the 60 minute version, airs on K -E KCET in Los Angeles. Now, this is tripping me out. Because I only know of the 60 minute version. I know of a like super edited version that's like 25 minutes or something like that. But I didn't know there was a longer version, if that's what that is implying. That's crazy. While the music played Sparrow number five, I think this is a broadside? What is this? No, I guess it's a, it might just be one poem that they made a book of. City Lights reissues Notes of a Dirty Old Man. Bukowski is paid in advance of $10,000. Oh my fucking God. This guy is raking in the fucking dough, dude. He got $68,000 in today's money. So if we add that, we're looking at 130000 plus, upwards of $130,000 he's done this year so far. Fuck me, dude. Ten times the advance he was paid for the original publication of the book less than five years earlier. And then South of No North was released in December. He had three addresses during this time. He was on DeLongpre, Edgewater Terrace. That's where he lived with Linda King. I think that was more in Silver Lake. And then over there on Oxford right here. Um, he read at USC Pasadena Long. Long Beach and UC Irvine, um, Moore Park College, um, UCLA, um, Cal State University, Long Beach, and San, Fran San Francisco Museum of Art Poetry Center. And there is an audio and video release, um, VHS and cassette. And Tom Bradley becomes mayor. All right, all right. Now, in 74, now that this motherfucker is rolling in the shit right now, Bird and Water Giant and Flame is going to come out this year. Bukowski had 55 beds in the same direction in the Wormwood Review number 54, which is a center section. Oh, like a center section like we do with the Bloodshed Review. That's fucking awesome. I've never seen that. I'm going to to try to find that. And then the other thing was poems written before jumping out of an eight-story window. The German copy, the German translation sells 50,000 copies. Okay, so this is when he explodes in Germany, obviously. This year, he's also rejected for a Guggenheim Fellowship. He sells his literary archive, tapes, paintings, notebooks, magazines, books, typescripts, to UC Santa Barbara for $5,000. This was previously thought to have happened in 1971, but a letter from September 74 says, just turned in my archives to the university. So this year obviously isn't as crazy as the year before. I don't know what he got for the German translation. I know that the money he was making from Germany was more than the money he was making in America, but there's no record of that here. So if he's making 3000 a year from what he's doing... He might have been making more by this time, but let's just say he was making 3000 a year and then got an extra 5000 So, I mean, he went from 130000 a year to 8000 a year. Got paid 500 to read at Illinois State University. Got paid 500 to read in Michigan. Oh, he did dial a poem for that. Oh, that's cool. I think that's still going on. It's like a phone number you can call, and every day it'll have another poem read by a poet. Oh, and this is the year he buys his um, 1967 Volkswagen Beetle for 1300 bucks. The license plate TRV491. Um, and it has his old phone number on here too, if you want to. Um, whatever. So, if you want to know what was going on in the world, um, or at least in LA, one of the largest police gunfights in US history breaks out in Compton, where Patty Hearst kidnappers the Symbionese Liberation Army are hiding out. 
Whoa. 500 LAPD officers shoot 5,000 rounds into a house, and the SLA returns fire with 4,000 rounds. Police eventually burn the house down, killing six people. Hearst was not inside. Holy shit, dude. That's a good story. Um, nude su sunbathing at Venice Beach gets national attention before the LA City Council votes to outlaw it. You fucking bastards. Let motherfuckers burn their dicks if they want. That's what I say. That is where we are in the world with Bukowski at this point. Dude, I never did his finances like that before. That was fucking crazy. I'm, I'm shocked. I'm fucking shocked. Good on him, though. Whatever. A couple things I want to talk about before we get into the table of contents here. This book is broken up into four parts. And I know I did a video where I briefly mentioned this, but I'm going to do it again here. So, Burn and Water, Giant and Flint. This book is four books it is it catches my heart in its hands crucifix in a death hand a terror street in agony way and um burning and water drowning in a flame the first two of those books were the books put out by lujan press lujan press also did the little magazine the outsider and those books were like they got awards for how fancy the books were they were all printed on an old printing press but on like crazy paper and like um just super articulated shit and that's kind of why those books are the most expensive when it comes to looking for first printings of Bukowski shit. Um, Lujan Press also put out, like, what's his fucking name? Henry Miller. They put out Henry Miller. Um, they, I know they did stuff with Burroughs and Ginsburg, but I don't know if they put any of their actual books out or if they were just a part of The Outsider and stuff like that. Lujan Press was pretty much the first quote-unquote reputable group of people to put faith in Bukowski. Like, there were smaller presses that did as well. And for that matter, Black Sparrow Press was, like, smaller than a small press when it started putting out Bukowski's stuff. Like, if you ever come across the actual book version of At Terror Street in Agony Way, it looks horrendous, and they misspelled the title... So they had to put like a sticker over it um, with the title spelled right. I'll try to find a picture and put it up here. Bukowski talks about how in the introduction, the introduction to this book is great, by the way. And this book is dedicated to Steve Richmond. So he says that, yeah, I'll just read this little first part here. The poems in the first three sections of this book are from the years 1955 to 1968. And the poems in the last section are the new work of 1972 to 1973. The reader might wonder what happened to the years in between 1969 and 1971, since the author once did vanish, literally, from 1944 to 1954, which is kind of more myth than fact, and we could talk about that at a later date, but not this time. Days Run Away Like Wild Horses Over the Hills came out in 1969 and contains the poems from late 68 and most of 69 plus selections from five early chapbooks not covered by the first three sections of this book mockingbird wish me luck came out in 1972 prints poems written from late 69 to early 72 so for my critics, readers, friends, enemies, ex-lovers, and new lovers, the present volume, along with Days and Mockingbird, contain what I like to consider my best work written over the past 19 years. I'm going to have to do some like heavy searching real quick on this, guys. Each of these sections bring back special memories. For it catches my heart in its hands, I was required to make a trip to New Orleans. The editor had to check me out and see if I was a decent human being. Catching the train at Union Station just below the terminal annex of the post office where I worked for Uncle Sam, I sat in the bar car and drank scotch and water and sped toward New Orleans to be judged and measured by an ex-con who owned an ancient printing press. John Webb believed that most writers, and he'd met some good ones including Sherwood Anderson, Faulkner, and Hemingway, were detestable human beings when they were away from their typewriters. I arrived, they met me, John and his wife Louise, we drank and talked for two weeks. Then John said, You're a bastard, Bukowski, but I'm going to publish you anyhow. I left town, but that wasn't all. 
Soon they were both in Los Angeles with their two dogs in a green hotel just off of Skid Row. Recheck. Drink and talk. I was still a bastard. Goodbye. Much leaving and waving through the train window. Louise cry, cried through the glass. It Catches was published. And It Catches My Heart in Its Hands is a line from a Robinson Jeffers poem. Um, so there's that. Uh, the bulk of the poems in Crucifix and the Death Hand were written during one very hot lyrical month in New Orleans in the year 1965. I'd walk down the street, I'd stagger. Sober, I'd stagger. Hear the church bells, wounded dogs, wounded knee, all that. I had gone into a slump or a blackout after the publication of It Catches, and John and Louise had brought me back down to New Orleans. I lived right around the corner from them with a fat, kind woman whose ex-husband, who died, had come very close to being welterweight or middleweight champion of the world, I forget which. Each night I went over to John and Louise's and we drank until early morning at the small table in the kitchen with the roaches running up and down the wall in front of us. They particularly liked to circle around the unshaded light bulb sticking out of the wall and we, as we drank and talked. I would go back to my place and awaken about 10.30 a.m., quite sick. I'd dress and walk over to John's place. The press was below street level and I'd peek down at him before I knocked. I could see him through the window, calm, cool, hardly hung over at all, humming and feeding pages of crucifix into the press. Got any poems, Bukowski, he'd ask as I walked in. One had to be careful. Feeding poems into a waiting press could easily dissolve into journalism. This is really important, and this goes back to what I was saying about when you're writing and trying to like theme a chapbook or whatever, don't worry about the theme until you already have all the poems done and then go through your poems and try to find a theme to make them fit. Because when you're like writing to theme, let's say, like say you have like nine poems and you need a 10th poem to finish this book, that poem is going to end up becoming more of you reciting something like you being a journalist, like just the facts, ma'am compared to you creating art. Because you're trying to fit something into a hole, you know? So I appreciate that. John would come downright unlaced if I didn't have a handful of poems. It wasn't as pleasant to be around that bastard then. And I'd find myself back in my room beating the typer. In the evening, if I brought him a little sheaf of poems, his mood would be better. Um, and then it talks about how there were stacks of his pages everywhere. So let me tell you a little bit about um, At Terror Street now. I used to go to John Thomas's place and stay all night. We'd take pills and drink and talk. That is, John took pills and I took pills and drank and we both talked. John was then in the habit of taping everything, whether it was good or bad, dull or interesting, worthless or useful. We would listen to our conversations the next day and it was a worthwhile process. At least for me, I realized how oafish and overbearing and off target I often was, at least when I was high and sometimes when I wasn't. At one time during these tapings, John asked that I bring over some poems and read them. I did, and left the poems there and forgot about them. The poems were thrown out with the garbage. Months passed. One day Thomas phoned me. Those poems, Bukowski, would make a good book. What poems, John? He said he had taken the tape of my poems and listened to it again. I'd have to type them off the tape. It's just too much work, I said. I'll type them up for you. So I agreed and soon I had the poems back in typescript form. At this time, a balding red-haired man with high scrubbed forehead, meticulous and kind, with very faint perpetual grin was coming by. He worked as a manager for an office furniture supply company and was a collector of rare books. His name was John Martin. He had published some of my poems as broadsides. He wrote me out checks as I sat at my kitchen table across from him, drinking beer and signing the broadsides. It was the beginning of the Black Sparrow Press, a house that was soon to begin publishing a large portion of America's avant-garde poetry, but neither of us knew it then. And so they ended up putting that book out. And then he says, Looking at these poems written between 1955 and 1973, I like for one reason or another, the last poem's best. I am pleased with this. I have, of course, no idea what shape my future poems will take, or even if I will write any, because I have no idea how long I will go on living. But since I began writing poetry quite late in life, at the age of 35, 
I like to think they'll give me a few extra years now at this end. Meanwhile, the poems that follow will have to do. And that is from Charles Bukowski on January 30th, 1974. So a couple things here that is really important too. You will usually always feel a closer connection with the poems that you have just written because you are just writing those. You're dealing with that stuff. You're going through that stuff. Stuff that you've already written about like years before, that, that shit that like you've already gone through and yes you will probably become a better writer the more you write i think what happens to a lot of writers especially poets is that they don't write about enough different stuff and this is why i'm always like and i don't know if this is why i'm the way i am but i have to like move every two or three years because i feel like i suck all the inspiration from wherever i'm at and then I need a fucking change of scenery. I need new experiences so I can fucking write about them, you know? For some of you, some of you might be feeling like the stuff you're writing right now isn't as good as the stuff that you used to write. And if it's because you're going to the same well over and over again, you already dealt with that shit. You already worked that shit out through poetry. So if you're still writing about the same shit that you already worked out, you're not going to feel as good about that okay like you need to be writing about new things all the time and even if you're writing about the old stuff you got to write it from a new perspective or like what have you learned since you wrote about this shit before you know like are you wiser are you older have you made more mistakes since the mistakes you used to write about you see what i'm saying for most people the newest stuff you write is your best stuff because that is like the stuff that is relevant to you at that moment. Okay, that's all I was getting at with that. What we're going to do now, because the other thing that people don't get when they pick this book up is that they assume that everything in this book, like the section from It Catches My Heart in Its Hands, that that's everything that was in that book. And that's not true. This is like a sample of what was in that book. And Crucifix in the Death Hand. They think that's the whole book, and it's not. Um, it's just a sample. And Terror Street, I think that too, um, isn't the whole Terror Street book. We're going to find out in like two seconds here. I could just look here because that is really confusing for some reason. That I don't quite know. Why can't I find this stupid fucking poem? Oh, is it called something different? Let's look at this real quick. Hang on. This says a literary romance is the last poem and it catches my heart in its hands section here. I don't know if that poem is actually in this. I thought that was in the last book we read. This doesn't have the $340 horse. Huh. That is really weird. Okay, so let's go to It Catches My Heart. And it's funny, because here it has a $350 horse. Let's see. Yeah, it has the alternative titles in here. Dude, that's weird. That is fucking weird. Okay, so whatever. Let's go back to this. Okay, so this is going to start off with um, The Tragedy of the Leaves. That's here. I Cannot Stand Tears is from It Catches My Heart in Its Hands. But it's not in this. So what else is that in? Flower Fist... Penguin Modern Poets, a Bukowski sampler, and then it ends up in Rooming House. So we've gone over it, at least in the chat books. Okay, Shoes. Is that one in here? That one is not in here. What's this from? It Catches My Heart and On Love. Oh, an alternative title is Jane Shoes. Okay, so it's a Jane poem. Okay. Um, a Real Thing, A Good Woman. Also not in here. What was this in? Run with the Hunted. Okay, yeah. We remember it from that. Um, to the Whore Who Took My Poems. That's in here. Worm. Is that in here? No. What's Worm from? It Catches My Heart. Okay, so... Worm through feasible light, what gift they gave you outside the blackbird's bill as the door no and the doorknob cannot hold you. Okay, so this poem, Worm, is only in It Catches My Heart in Its Hands. So I will have to try to hunt that one down. The State of World Affairs, that's in here. The Japanese Wife, 
is not in here, but we read that in what? Long shot poems from bro players. Okay. So we did that one already on the chat book videos. For Marilyn M is in here. The life of Broden is in here. Winter comes in a lot of places in August. We just read that. That was in long shot poems. No charge. That's in here. Oh, there's a literary romance. Truth's a hell of a word. That is not in here, but that was in long shot. The sun wields mercy. That was in long shot. I wonder if he had a clause where he couldn't release the poems from long shot for a certain amount of time. Let me see. Uh, literary romance we just talked about. Reprieve and admixture. That's in rooming house. So we have that in there. Conversation in the cheap room. Is that in here? No, but we've read that. What's that in? Long shot. Okay. Well, there you go. Uh, um, letter from the North. Not in here. Okay. Letter from the North is in long shot poems. I'm, I'm seeing a pattern here, guys. Um, okay, but later. Is that in here? Nope. Ooh, that's only in It Catches My Heart. So that's another one I'm going to have to hunt down. Let me see. A Minor Impulse to Complain. That was in Run with the Hunted. So we just read that one there. Um, the Dog is in It Catches My Heart Only. Okay, so there's quite a few poems so far. Well, three. Nothing Subtle is in Rooming House. Okay, so that's all right. The Twins is in this one. The Day It Rained in L.A. is in this one. 2 p.m. Beers in this one. Hooray for the Roses is in this. The Sunday Artist, The Old Poet, all these are in here. To a High Class Whore I Refused is not in here. Okay, so where's that one? Only in It Catches My Heart, and it's also in The Outsider. Here's a little... How can you say lamer than the leaf falling next to the dog when the shades of houses... That's how it starts off, I guess. Dinner, Rain, and Transport. That is in Penguin Modern Poets. It seems like the poems from Penguin Modern Poets aren't in here, but I think Tragedy of the Leaves is in that. Now I gotta go back and fucking look at that. Fuck me. Oh, that's not. That's like his fucking go-to thing. All right, whatever. Okay. Um, poem for these four. That's only in It Catches My Heart. Um, regard Me, that's in something. That's in Flower Fist, yeah. I'm with the Roots of the Flowers, not in here. That's in Penguin Modern Poets. Um, the Race is right there. Vegas is right there. Um, pay Your Rent or Get Out. This is in It Catches My Heart, and then there's probably a fucked up version of it in The People Look Like Flowers at Last. Let me see here. Um... Love is a piece of paper torn to bits. We've read that. That's in Flower Fist. Not in here. The house is in here. I wait in the white rain. Penguin Modern Poets. We'll go through that. I have that. So we can go through that if you guys want to. Um, the Kings Are Gone. That is in Poems and Drawings. Which I don't know if we have done. But this is how I guess it starts. To say great words of kings in life, to give equations to math to a math genius. Nope. To give equations like a math genius. I sat on a play by Shakespeare, but the grandeur did not come through. That's funny. It is not much. This is just in this, and the people look like flowers at last, and the pleasures of the damned. A side of the sun. Okay, that's in here. The talkers is in here. A pleasant afternoon in bed is in here. Nine Rings. Let's see what this is. This is in Rooming House, so we'll look at that then. Um, Blasted. Not in here. Blasted is only in It Catches My Heart. Songs for Sadists Without a Place to Sit Down. Not in here. It's only in It Catches My Heart, but it's been recorded on 90 Minutes in Hell, 70 Minutes in Hell, and at Terror Street and Agony Way CD. Okay, I wonder if that means it's going to be in the Terror Street part of this. I don't know. We'll find out. The Priest and the Matador we just read. That was in what? Run with the Hunted. Okay. Um, and that's in Penguin Modern Poets as well. Love and Fame and Death is in here. My Father is in here. Um, People Come Through. Not in here. 
That's only in It Catches My Heart. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of poems left, and there's only a couple in here. My father. Is that in here? Oh, that is in here. Okay. My father, people come through. The gift. No. The bird is in here. The singular self is in here. Council is not. That's in Penguin Modern Poets. The ox is just and catches my heart. Wrong number. Um, it's in wrong, uh, Run With The Hunted. Sundays Kill More Men Than Bombs. Run With The Hunted. Farewell Thing While Breathing. Penguin Modern Poets. Rat Rises. That's in Rooming House, so that's okay. And then um, a $350 horse and a $100 whore. That's in here. So then the last one, two, three, four, five poems are not in here. And those are Bull, which is in Poems and Drawings. So we'll probably be doing that soon if we haven't yet. I write this upon la the last drinks hammer. This is in Penguin Modern Poets. The Virgins of Christmas is in Just It Catches My Heart. I think of Hemingway. Um, that's in Storm for the Living and Dead. So we will be getting to that, but it's going to be a bit. Uh, Old Man Dead in a Room. This is a great one. And this one has been in a ton of shit, too. Run with the Hunted, Penguin Modern Poets, um, Bukowski Sampler, and it's in Rooming House and the Essential Bukowski. Okay, so, so there we go. There's a lot here that I guess what it boils down to is if it was in Long Shot Poems for Broke Players or Penguin Modern Poets, it didn't make it in here. And then there's probably about five to ten poems i can't i didn't keep count that are just in it catches that were left out of this for some reason probably bukowski didn't like him anymore um is the best way to do that okay so let's go to the next oh poems and drawings is the next chat book i'm going to be doing that is something that we'll be doing okay so crucifix and a death hand this is also got a couple poems in here Okay, and let's see. We are going to be starting out at View from the Screen. Okay, so let's see. Sound down the street, only in Crucifix. I think of Mice Cooling It is in Crucifix and the Bukowski Sampler. Uh, Butterfly, just in Crucifix. Sing to the Gods or Kangaroos is in Crucifix and a Bukowski Sampler. Um, view from a Screen, okay, and this is also in... Oh, that's okay. It's just basically in this stuff here. Okay, um, Not With Boldness. That's not here. That's only in Crucifix. Um, when the berry bush dies, I'll swim down the green river with my hair on fire. That's not in here. Um, that's in Penguin Modern Poets. Okay, well, there you go. Mother and Son. That's in Rooming House, so that's cool. Sunflower, Penguin Modern Poets. Uh, grass we have. And Fuzz, we have Seahorse. Um, that's in the Bukowski Sampler. Report on a Consumption of Myself. I love that. Penguin Modern Poets. And he's... This is read on a ton of things. Like, you could hear him reading this. No Lady Godiva. That's in here. Okay. That's a good one. The Workers. That's in here. Beans with Garlic. That's in here. Mama is in here. Machine Guns, Towers, and Time Clocks. Yes. Good morning, brother. How are you? No. That's in a Bukowski sampler. Okay. Um, something for the touts. Oh, yeah, that's in here. Okay. Um, the loss, loss, loss. That is not. That's in Penguin Modern Poets. Sway With Me is in here. Lack of Almost Everything is in here. Number six is in here. This. Where, where was that? Oh, here we go. This is not in here. That's in Rooming House, though, so that's okay. Um, Don't Come Around, But If You Do is in here. Startle, startled Into Life Like a Fire, that's in here. Stew, yes. QP, that is only in Crucifix. Lilies in My Brain, that's in here. Itch, Come and Gone, not in here. That's in Rooming House, so that's okay. I'm dead now. Um, I think that's this one. I'm dead. 
but I know the dead are not like this. Swept away in orange peel and whistle yowl. That is not in here. That's just in crucifix. At the end of the feet, only in crucifix, but it's also on the 90 minutes in hell. Let them go. Only in crucifix. Like violet in the snow, that's on here. Letters from too far is in here, but all I ask is a fate chance is only in crucifix. See this flower, just in crucifix. Pansies, that's in rooming house. I was born to hustle roses down the avenues of the dead. That um, is not in here, but that was, we just read that in, um, no we didn't. Why the fuck, I remember reading that for something. Oh, wait, that was a line in a poem in the last book. And I guess he wrote a poem based off of that line. Uh, don't know how I feel about that, buddy. Um, but that's in Penguin Modern Poet, Poets and Rooming House. And he read it on um, 90 Minutes in Hell and Solid Citizen. Okay, um, let's see. Oh, Farewell Foolish Objects. Not in here. A Bukowski sampler and rooming house. Okay. Um, Man in the Sun. Yes. I kneel. That's in rooming house. So that's okay. The swans walk my brain in April. It rains. That's a clunky fucking title. That's in rooming house as well. The girls on Sunset Boulevard. That's just in crucifix. Woman. Yes, we have woman. Um, confession for those who do not breathe at funerals. No. What is this in? Penguin Modern Pirate. Penguin Modern Pirate. Why can't I fucking say that? Like all the years wasted. Yes, that's in here. They all, they all of them know. Yes, that's in here. And a nice day is in here. Okay, so this one, the poems from Crucifix and Death Hand um, are either in a Bukowski sampler or Penguin Modern Poets for the most part. But there are quite a lot from Crucifix that he did not put in here. And I think a lot of that has to do with that little line he said where you got to be careful when you're writing directly into the press or else your poems are going to come off like journalism. I have a feeling he doesn't like a lot of these poems. That could be why a lot of those haven't really been released in other forms. Okay, so at Terror Street... Um, we have As I Lay Dying, not in here, but that's in Rooming House, so that's okay. Beer Bottle, got it. The Body, got it. KO, got it. Um, Sunday Before Noon, got it. Seventh Race, got it. Going Out to Get the Mail, got it. I Wanted to Overthrow, got it. The Girls, got it. The Clothing, that's just in Terror Street, and it's on the recording at terror street from 1968 but it doesn't say that it's on the newer terror street this one starts off with it's 9 30 again it's always 9 30 and my underwear falls off as a dog cross the avenues <laughs> as dogs cross the avenues that's fucking good um okay next 35 seconds no that's not in here okay that's on both terror street cds and it's in rooming house so that's fine a note on rejection slips. Yes. The Mexican girls. No. Um, this is on the original Terror Street recording. And it's in Rooming House, so that's okay. True story? Yes. X-Pug? Yes. Class? Yes. Living? Yes. The intellectual? Yes. Red and gold paint? No. Okay, what's that from? Um, a Bukowski sampler in 69, so we'll hit that. Brewed and filled by. No! What's that from? On drinking. Okay, so we'll hit that. Shot of red eye? Yes. Um, big time? No. That's just in here. Wow. Um, I don't need a bed sheet with stilts for eyes to kill you in. <laughs> That's Okay, that's in rooming house. Good, good, good. Um, I met a genius? Yes. Yes. Poverty, yes. A poem to a most affectionate lady, no. Okay, so this is in Rooming House. Cool, cool. Um, to kiss the worms goodnight, yes. Tempest, no. That's just in this. John Dillinger, yes. The Flower Lover, yes. 
Traffic ticket, yes. A little sleep, yes. He even looked like a nice guy, yes. Children in the sky, yes. Sour ghost, no. Sour ghost is only on um, Terror Street, but it's on the 1998 Terror Street CD. So that's cool. Um, the weather is hot on the back of my watch, yes. A note to the lady, yes. Reunion is in rooming house. Now, let's see, just at in Terror Street. The difference between a bad poet and a good one, yes, that's in here. Eat, no, what's eat in? Rooming house, okay. The man with the hot nose, nope. Rooming house, notions from a muddled, nope. 275 steps from Hollywood, nope. What, wait a second here. Okay, notions is in rooming house. Okay. 275 steps is in Terror Street. And for the Mercy Mongers, that's here. Oh, and that was a broadside, too. The thing I'm freaking out about right now that's kind of blowing my mind is that the curtains are waving isn't listed here. Hmm. That's really weird. Hmm. I've heard the curtains are waving. It's, I think it's on the Terror Street CD. So I don't know why it wouldn't be listed here. But anyway, so that's that. Um, and then the rest of the stuff is the stuff that is the new book called Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame. Oh, you know what I just realized? Unless he has another poem called Now. Now is in Burning in Water, Drowning in Flame. What the fuck? Did he really do that? Where did I see that? What am I looking at right now? Oh, because I'm on the wrong page. Okay. There was a poem in here called Now, right? Did I see that? Or maybe I didn't. Oh, yeah, right there. Now. That's the first poem in here. Okay. So then if we go to Burning in Water, Now was written in 1972. Okay, so he has two different poems called Now. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to not, like, think any more about this. That was a really long video. Thank you for sticking with me there. Um, if you want to join the Bukowski Book Club, at least like hit the join button and at least join at the thank you crew level. Any level you get to be in the Bukowski Book Club. Okay? So read some Bukowski, type hard, and I will see you on the other side. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Crew and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. Thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the crew or the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.